Sometimes when the company's stock goes down over 80%, sometimes it's a good deal. Sometimes, no matter how much it declines, it's not a good deal. And in order for stock prices to decline that much, usually there needs to be a lot of fear in the market. And of course, now with the interest rates going up and the Russian and Ukraine situation, there's definitely a lot of fear in the market. Poshmark stock, is it one of those that it's good to have a look at or is it something that we should stay away? So stick around to find out. If you're new to this channel, my name is Mariusz Skonieczny. I run Microcap Explosions, which is a website dedicated to microcap stocks, which are ignored and underfollowed by the investment industry. I also wrote 10 books on investing, one of which is available for a free download at microcapexplosions.com. I also created Value Investing University, which is a free resource to make you a more intelligent investor. Usually when I look at companies to see if I'm interested in their stock, I right away know what I don't want and I have a pretty good idea of what I want. And when I look at a company like Poshmark, I know right away. I want it. It's exactly the kind of business that I like. So let's have a look at it. Poshmark is a company that you can have an app on your phone and you can buy or sell used clothing. So think of like Plato's Closet where people go physically to try on new clothes, to sell used clothes and get good price on used clothes. And I actually talked about on this channel about Winmark Corporation, which is the owner of Plato's Closet. And if you look at the long term chart for Winmark, it's a huge win. So Poshmark is a similar company, but you don't have to physically go in there. You have an app. You can buy and sell mostly secondhand clothes, but also you can do new clothes. What do I like about a business like this? It's like an auction business. So right away when I look at it, I'm like, yes, I know exactly what this is about. It's a company that is developing a brand name, but most importantly, it has a network effect. Network effect is something that protects the company's revenues. And network effect is when more people are uh, using the platform, more others want to buy the platform. So for example, as more people are uh, willing to sell their clothing on Poshmark, more other people want to buy and vice versa. That's what makes it wonderful. If you look at the active number of users for Poshmark, I mean, it's in a continuous uptrend. And most recently, the company has almost 8 million active users. If you compare it to competitors such as Facebook Marketplace or eBay, of course, it's not even close to that. But you see, that's what makes this business so wonderful because you don't need, I mean, it's nice to have hundreds of millions of users or a billion users on the platform, but you can have niche platforms that are growing. I mean, think about this. It's like you're the only one in town that has a platform that people from your city can buy and sell clothing to each other. You don't have to be Facebook. You don't have to be Etsy. You can still make decent amounts of money. And these are the kinds of businesses that you look at it and you're like, yeah, it's going to make me rich. And so how does Poshmark make money? They charge 20% of the final price between buyers and sellers. Poshmark doesn't have to carry the inventory. It's a wonderful business model. It doesn't have to have inventory. It's a very asset light business model, right? Because it's an app, it's a platform. So the seller wants to sell a sweater or whatever, or a shirt, and then posts it out there, and then buyers are bidding for it, or and then the seller ships it. So Poshmark gets its fee and doesn't really have to ship it. So the gross profit margins are through the roof. If you look at the company's revenues, so for like 2020, they were 262 million and look at the cost of revenue. Okay. The cost of revenue was 43 million. So if we take 262 minus 43507, that's your gross profit. Okay. And you divide that gross profit, which is 218 million divided by 262. That's an 84% profit margin. And that's absolutely wonderful. And what consists of this cost of revenue? Well, it's mostly like processing fee, credit card fees, things like that. It's not like you're manufacturing something and the cost of good is 
to manufacture something. In this case, it's just cost of processing it. So now you have a gross profit margin that's so freaking wonderful. 84%, now you can do something about it, right? Now, 84% of your revenues go for other things like of course you have general administrative as you can see here operational support uh, research and development general administrative right and and marketing so notice that the marketing expense it is the biggest the biggest expense out of all and that's okay that's okay because that kind of marketing, even though it's categorized in the income statement as an expense, it's an investment in the future because the more you market, the more you grow your users, the more you grow your users, the more network effect. But that kind of marketing is only possible because 84% of your revenues uh, result in gross profit. And then now you have all this chunk of money that you can use to grow your base, right? And if you look at the years of like 2018, so let's let's take again 148.05 minus the cost of revenue 22,837. It's 125. So out of that 125, they were able to spend 90 million, which is a big chunk, 90 million on marketing. If you look at the, the other year, 2009, 205. 225 minus the cost here 34 142 that's a gross profit of 171 and they were able to put 132 back into marketing and then in 2020 they reduced that marketing spend that's what allowed the company to be profitable because if they spent like 150 million here then they wouldn't be profitable but this just shows you that marketing spend is at their discretion and in this year they chose to spend a little bit less so that they could be profitable but you see that kind of marketing expense this is when you have to understand how an income statement operates because some of the things on an income statement are true expenses and some of the some of them are also investments in this case the marketing expense it, yeah part of it is an expense because you always lose some people but in something like this i don't expect too much churn so a lot of it is an investment in the future and even though it's an investment it shows an expense and if you like really take it out completely you really see the incredible business and incredible profitability of this kind of business let's take a look at the valuation so poshmark went public in january of 2021 so it's pretty new if you look at the chart it went public like right here and look at that ever since then the company has been on a decline in terms of the stock price and right now the stock is down about 83 percent but it didn't go public at as it shows here 83 it actually went public at 42 dollars okay that was the ipo at 42 dollars and when it opened it actually started trading at 97.5 so actually it was trading the first day at 100 so the valuation at about 42 the valuation was 3 billion and then when it started trading i mean the valuation was 6 billion okay notice today the valuation is about 1 billion okay and now so keep that in mind ipo at 3 billion then it traded all the way up to 6 billion now it is at 1 billion so we always have to compare what does this mean so when we go back to the revenues revenues for for 2020 262 okay now if we go to the most recent nine months we can see that the revenues are already much higher because the company continues to grow so 242 that's for three quarters if we take 242 divided by three and times four we can see that the revenue run rate is about 322 okay and then so 1.1 billion divided by 322 okay so we have a, a market cap of 1.1 and the revenues are 322 that means that the company is trading for a market cap or price to revenue multiple 
of a little bit over three. When the IPO came out, it was priced at three billion, right? But those revenues weren't as high as they are today. Let's use 2020 revenues. It was priced at three billion divided by 262. So it was priced at 11 times revenues. And when the stock price doubled pretty much at the open, it was trading at 23 times revenues. Those revenues are wonderful. As I said, very high quality revenues, revenues that are protected by a network effect. Margins are incredible, 84, 85%. I love those revenues, but I don't love them when I have to pay 23 times. And this is an example of even a great company is not a great investment when you overpay for it. And when Poshmark went public, there was so much hype around it. Everybody was in love with this IPO and look what it turned out. The stock price is in a free fall. And now, of course, everybody's disappointed. All the gross stocks are selling off, but now it's trading at only three times revenues or a little bit more than three times revenues. But now this company is profitable. You see, as I said before, because the marketing expense was reduced in 2020, this company became profitable. And if we look at the cash flow statement, notice here that the net cash providing by operating activities in 2020 was 84 million. And we also want to look at free cash flow, right? So free cash flow is cash flow provided by operating activities minus the capital expenditures which are located in it in the investing activities. What are the capital expenditures? Purchases of property and equipment. And the rest of it is purchases of marketable securities, marketable securities and sale. There's nothing there. Purchase of capital. Look how low it is. So less than 2 million. So more than 80 million of free cash flow. Okay. In 2020, Poshmark had more than 80 million of free cash flow. And why are there so, such low capex requirements? Because it's a capital light business model. That's what I love about businesses like this that are capital light. If you take this business and this were to be a mining business, that ca capex would be like everything. Like it would be, it would eat up completely every cash flow that from operations. If you put it in like oil tankers, it would be eaten up completely. Why? Because some businesses are capital intensive and this business is not capital intensive. The capex that you have in the investing section of the cash flow statement, it's not on the income statement. So the income statement might still show you nice net income, but then the entire net income or is eaten up by capex and it wouldn't show up on the on the income statement. In this case, we have a nice income, not nice cash flow, and then we don't spend anything on capex. That's what makes it an unbelievable business. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, the, this free cash flow, all these calculations, that's why go ahead and sign up for valueinvestinguniversity.com. It's free and I go over income statement, balance sheet and cash flow statement. And I show you step by step how to calculate these things. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, just sign up. It's free. No excuse. OK, now we have a market cap of 1.1 billion. Right. And then if we compare it to 80 million of free cash flow business that's growing, has a lot of room to grow just because it has 8 million active users right now, who is to say you cannot have 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 million? No problem. So the grow is humongous. The company is expanding to India and other countries in addition. I mean, plenty of room in the US. But this is what I'm talking about. Great business and great valuation. Why? Because Mr. Market has lost its mind. Mr. Market is so negative on the economy, on the interest rates, on the war breaking out on this and that, that Mr. Market is giving you this business as a gift. And this is the kind of things that I get excited about. Let's look at the cash flow for the first nine months of 2021. This is the income statement, right? For the nine months. OK, and I am interested how the cash flow statement looks. And this is what the cash flow statement looks for the nine months. And look at this here. It is 33, almost yeah, 33 million. So 33. So 
it is about 44 million for 2021. And that's probably why the market is not liking it or is selling it off because the prior year it was more and in this year is a little bit less. But that kind of stuff doesn't concern me because as I showed you with the levels of marketing, for example, decide to spend a little bit less and it shows a little bit less. I am more concerned about the business, the earning power of this business, whether that kind of earning power is shown every time or whether they're sacrificing the current profitability to show it even more. I wouldn't even care if they didn't show any free cash flow because Again, if they decided to, to say, let's reinvest everything that we have into marketing and then that marketing expense shows on the income statement and therefore it is a cash outflow. So it would show very little, very little free cash flow, but then it would grow the user base. It would grow the revenues, which are fantastic revenues. It wouldn't bother me at all because I'm looking five years down the road, 10 years down the road, and I see this to be a lot bigger than what it is today. If you have a long-term outlook, I can totally see Poshmark be able to grow user base. Why not 30 million users, 50 million users? Why not? I can totally see revenues grow 10 times from here. So instead of being 300 million, I can totally see them be 3 billion. I don't have any problem with this. There's a lot of people that want to sell and resell clothing. And as long as you build the database, as long as you build your active users, as long as the moat stays protected because of the network effect, I don't see a problem down the road, whether it's five or 10 years down the road, revenues to be 3 billion. And then for the market to price this business either either off of free cash flow, which they can definitely generate free cash flow. They showed us in 2020 that they can do. It can trade off of high multiple 10 to 20 based on revenues. So if you look at, let's say the revenues reach 3 billion in the future, whatever, however many years it takes. Yeah, I can totally see the valuation of this 30 to 60 billion, no problem. And today's market cap is about a billion. I have a feeling that a company like this especially from the current valuation, can be a huge winner for your portfolio and it could definitely change your life.